So Roger Ailes, uh, well, admittedly legendary um, founder of Fox News. He, now he didn't own Fox News, Rupert Murdoch owns News Corp, uh, but he did found it, uh, has passed away. Now, uh, it's not the only reason Roger Ailes is legendary. Uh, he's also legendary uh, for the infamy that he achieved uh, near the end of his life uh, for the incredible amount of sexual harassment that he did, but also for uh, his political exploits through Nixon, uh, Reagan, Bush, and then George W. Bush, and Trump even as well. So look, a lot of uh, negative things to say about Roger Ailes, and, and I won't hesitate. There's this whole nonsense about, oh, once someone has passed away, all of a sudden they're a good guy. No, that's not how it works. Or don't let's talk about it today. What, what are we gonna randomly bring it up two and a half weeks from now? No, of course he died, we're gonna talk about it today. So we will pull no punches here for what Roger Ailes actually was. And, and how he died at the end was sad, apparently a little miserable, and, and, I, and I don't mourn that. So we'll get to, get to that in the end. Uh, but uh, the upside for Ailes is that he was effective. And so got to call it like it is and we'll explain that as well. So let's begin to explain to you Roger Ailes' life and why he was actually, if you didn't know it, and I've said this on the show all the time, one of the most powerful men uh, in our lifetimes and I argued from time to time, and I think I would still maintain that argument today, probably the most powerful person in America for decades and decades. So I'll explain to you why right now. So as we go to Huffington Post for our explanation of his life here, they say Ailes was widely recognized as a media visionary who targeted an underserved segment of the population and successfully portrayed the establishment media for millions of viewers as hopelessly liberal and out of touch with their concerns. That is certainly true. I think a lot of people thought he did it in a despicable way, but to give him credit, conservatives were longing for a media organization. He served that audience and he served it really well and he got the ratings to prove it. So I didn't mind Fox News existing as a conservative media organization, that makes perfect sense, there's nothing wrong with it. I minded the, the lie of uh, fair and balanced, which was preposterous on its face. And Roger Ailes, of course, knew that it was a lie. And, and in fact, I'm gonna get to his plans about how he'd been planning it uh, for almost all of his life. So um, post continues, uh, but Ailes didn't achieve cable news rating success simply by offering an ideological alternative. He stoked fears and racial resentment. And in the post 9-11 years, his network maligned Americans, it deemed insufficiently patriotic and beat the drums of war for a Republican president, uh, to say the least. Uh, there's a lot more on that uh, as we go through his life. In fact, now, you, you, I don't know if you remember this, but he was at the Michael Douglas show as a producer. Now, that's where the allegations of sexual harassment began. And it, he would uh, have lines of women uh, there to audition and he would basically say, if you uh, sleep with me, you will get, a, get to go on the show. And if you don't, you won't. And uh, there, Countless examples of women now coming forward and saying he did that over and over and over again in some horrific stories of him pulling his uh, pants down and chasing women around the office. Uh, so we'll talk more about that in a second. And then he went into politics. In 1970, he wrote a memo for Nixon called A Plan for Putting the GOP on TV News, in which he urged the White House to fully embrace the power of television. Now, I read that memo, it is amazing, it's amazing for its raw honesty, it's amazing for how much they put it in to execution and how well that it worked and of course how noxious it is. But uh, so he meets uh, Nixon in 1967 as Nixon's about to run again in 68. He actually on the Michael Douglas show he met him and he starts working with him and in 70 he writes that memo. Inside the memo he explains how Republicans should take over television. And he explains that hey, you know what? People that are watching TV, it's super easy to do propaganda for them. And then that way we can basically brainwash them. Here, let me give you more details. Uh, Roger Ellis, this is a quote from him back then in the memo. He said, today television news is watched more often than people read newspapers, than people listen to radio, than people read or gather any other form of communication. The reason, people are lazy. With television, you just sit, watch, listen. The thinking is done for you. So there it is, that was Roger Ailes plan all the way back in 1970 and boy did he execute that on Fox News. So he knew, hey, my audience is stupid and lazy. I'm just gonna brainwash them day in, day out with television and then we're gonna achieve Republican victories. Fox News has always intended to be a Republican propaganda outlet and it continues to be that today, at least they should be honest about it. So 
And by the way, when you read the details of that memo, and I covered this back when I was on MSNBC, it is amazing. He told Richard Nixon, for example, on a Christmas lighting ceremony, look, uh, you should uh, grab a kid and do it with him. It'll make you uh, much more endearing to the country. But don't let the kid press the button to light the tree because it'll make him seem more powerful than you. This is the level of detail uh, that he puts into it. But if you do it and not the kid, it'll seem like you're uh, you know, not letting the poor kid do it. So make sure you and him press the button at the same time. And then you see it unfold right in front of you, Nixon and the kid, he, Nixon grabs the kid, he goes, let's do it at the same time, and they light up the Christmas tree. So he has been the man behind the curtain for all this time. He told Nixon how to behave and that helped him win. And then later George H.W. Bush and of course before that Reagan and then George W. Bush, he was absolutely pivotal in. I'll get to that in a minute as well. So let's keep going in his career. Ailes was called on to help President Ronald Reagan prepare for a 1984 reelection debate. After his disastrous performance in an earlier debate, he later worked on Vice President George H.W. Bush's presidential campaign. Um, Bush Sr. tweeted out today that he probably would not have become president were it not for Roger Ailes. Now, I think that he actually had an even bigger role to play in George W. Bush's election. Now, this is not talked about nearly enough. Roger Ailes hired a person to run the vote count in the 2000 election at Fox News. You know who that person was? It was George W. Bush's cousin. And you know what happened on that fateful night when George W. Bush lost the popular vote and it was a statistical tie in Florida. There's no way that any reasonable, objective news organization should have called that election either way on that night. But there was one player in so-called news that was not reasonable or objective, that was intended to be a Republican propaganda, and boy, he nailed it on that night. He had George Bush's cousin call the election, and the rest of the failures in the news media as usual, went along with Roger Ailes and what had to be, you got to give him credit, his genius plan there. He said, look, I'll call it Fox News, I'll say it's fair and balanced. And I got to be honest with you, the rest of the mainstream media, you were all schmucks and you played right into his hands. And there were story after story throughout all the years of how CNN and MSNBC executives would be watching what Fox News was doing and say, boy, they're talking about it a lot, so I guess we should get on it, we don't want to be late. He played you like a fiddle. And on that night, they called the election for Bush, Fox News did first, and all the others panicked and said, "Oh my God, Fox News is calling it. We, we don't want to be late. And then they all called it. Later, when all the news organizations, well after the election and, and Bush was installed in office, did a recount of the whole state of Florida. Guess who had won? Not just the popular vote, the electoral vote. Al Gore, by every method of recounting, if you count, recounted the whole state of Florida. He had won the election in every way, but that night Fox News had George Bush's cousin call it in the state that George Bush's brother ran. And that's how Roger Ailes stole an entire election for the Republican Party. So was he monumentally important? Absolutely. Now, let's talk about the rest of his career where he ran into a lot of trouble. Again, now a little bit of background on how he got back into media after politics. After shifting to media in the late 1980s, Ailes served as a top executive at CNBC and at Channel America's Talking, a predecessor to MSNBC. He joined Rupert Murdoch in 1996 to create Fox News, which took off during the Clinton impeachment scandal in the late 1990s. By the early 2000s, Fox News was the top rated cable news network, a distinction it holds today, to this day. And again, credit where credit is due, Fox News kicked the crap out of the other cable news stations because they knew how to serve their audience. And Roger Ailes knew exactly what kind of red meat they liked, whether it was positive news or not, whether it was the right thing to do or not, whether it helped the country or not. He gave them the red meat they wanted and it helped them in the ratings. And look at how pivotal he was. He was at CNBC in the beginning and MSNBC at the very beginning and then at Fox News. And all these media organizations that he then turned around and called the liberal media, had actually hired him to, to begin with. He knew they weren't liberal, he knew they were willing to hire him, he knew they were willing to go conservative, but he smeared them as liberal media anyway because it helped his propaganda. In fact, in that 1970 memo, he talked about how they should smear the media as liberal. And then they executed that for the next five decades or so, and they're still in the middle of doing Roger Ailes' plan. Amazing, okay. now. Uh, Having the Post explains that Ailes also had a reputation for paranoia and vindictiveness and a tendency to smear and attack perceived enemies. 
and his wildly successful career is inextricably linked to the scandal that brought him down. Following a lawsuit filed in July by former Fox and Friends co-host Gretchen Carlson, dozens of women claimed that Ailes sexually harassed them at various points in his political and media career. Okay, now then we of course saw what in fact Roger Ailes had been all along. Back at the Mike Douglas show, again, literally took out his genitalia and chased women around the room with it. That's who Roger Ailes was. And at Fox News, apparently, he did over and over again. He would tell people you need to, he would tell women you need to either sleep with me and you will get promoted, or if you don't sleep with me, you're gonna get fired. And oftentimes, women wouldn't sleep with him, and then they would be removed from air. So all these Fox News hosts, the male hosts that are now like, oh, he's a patriot and he's a wonderful human being and what a great American warrior, that's because he didn't take his penis out and run around chasing you around the office, right? So that's the the personal life that was so miserable and 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 cruel. Um, but what he did in, in his public life, he, look, you could say, hey, they're, they're honest Republicans that they just think that lower taxes will like give us better economy, etc. But that's not what Roger Ailes did. So he, he did that kind of propaganda as well. But mainly, he said, okay, you have to be worried about the other. Fear brings ratings, fear brings voters. So let's get them scared about blacks, let's get them scared about Latinos, let's get them scared about Muslims, let's get them scared about gay people. And he did it over and over again. And how many segments have we shown on the Young Turks? Well, they're bringing on a, a, a black uh, guest to tell you how wrong black culture is and how all the violence is uh, because of black people in the country. How many times did he have uh, Bill O'Reilly go on the air and talk about uh, Tiller the baby killer until uh, Dr. Tiller was assassinated by a right wing terrorist? He brought in uh, Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck said that, uh, you know, all the outrageous things that he said, let alone that he said that Obama had a resentment and a racism basically against white people. And he brought in these murderers row of bigots to poison the the culture of America, the media of America, and the minds of so many people. And so now there are all these Fox News zombies out there who think, oh no, Barack Obama was not a citizen of the United States, he was a socialist, he was a Marxist. Uh, and uh, there was there are secret plots to bring in Sharia law into the country, and the immigrants are the criminals and the rapists, which of course brings us back to Donald Trump. So his final act was helping Trump to get elected uh, as president this time around. Ailes also, they explain here, advised Trump during the campaign. And the two men were longtime friends. Trump defended Ailes after allegations against the Fox News boss surfaced last year. Now, of course, Trump did that. Trump was also. And admitted sexual harasser, at least on the tapes that we obviously saw during the and heard during the campaign. So um, the result of all that sexual harassment was this. 21st Century Fox announced in a quarterly report just this month that it has had to pay a total of $45 million in costs, quote, related to settlements of pending and potential litigations. That's both Ailes and and uh Bill O'Reilly, his acolyte as well, who also sexually harassed women. And of course, there's nothing done about it because Roger Ailes was running the station. Ailes himself reportedly received a payout of as much as $40 million. So sometimes there's justice in the world and sometimes you never get that justice. So Roger Ailes became an incredibly wealthy and powerful man, in my opinion, poisoning the culture and the politics of this country for all that time. And unfortunately, he was fairly successful. but. In his end, he didn't go out well. Uh, Gabriel Sherman, who has done some brilliant reporting about Ailes and Fox News, uh, explained uh, what happened at the end. He said Ailes was spending time apart from his wife in recent days. Given all the stories about sexual harassment, that is unsurprising, I suppose. Elizabeth Ailes had been in Palm Beach. Ailes was alone up in Garrison, New York. Um, he explained further, per second family friend uh, on cause of death, Ailes fell in Palm Beach and had a blood clot fall. From the fall, he suffered complications and then eventually passed away. So he died at the end, fairly alone. He fell and metaphorically couldn't get back up. And even Trump had to distance himself from Ailes at one point. So he wasn't advising Trump, he wasn't at Fox News, he had lost all of his power. So I'm glad he lived as long as he did to be able to see at the very end, his defeat and humiliation.
It was a long time coming, and if he had a worthy adversary on the other side, he would have come a long, long time ago. But the Democrats in this country got taken for a ride, and they never knew what hit him. And the same thing with mainstream news. He pulled them along on that ride, and they went full bore. They did everything that he said they would do. In that fateful memo in 1970, he outlined what he was gonna do. And the schmucks in cable news and in the Democratic Party never figured out how to beat him until the very end. And they didn't beat him, he beat himself. So all of his monstrous designs finally caught up with him. And if uh, today the mainstream or conservatives want me to shed a tear over Roger Ailes, who I think set this country back in so many different ways, um, well, they're going to be sorely mistaken because I don't. Uh, I, I like that he died alone and humiliated. And in fact, the, one of the last things that anybody heard from him was when asked how he's doing, he said, quote, well, if you wanna know if I'm suicidal, the answer is no. Well, the very fact that you have to answer that question and someone asks you near the end of your life, hey, Roger, you're in such bad shape, are you suicidal? Well, I, let's just put it this way. For all the conservatives that have poisoned our culture with their money, their greed, their bigotry, if the last sentence out of all their mouths is, well, I'm not exactly suicidal, that's not such a bad way for them to go. Podcast the Young Turks anytime you want, tytnetwork.com slash join. I think it's weird. No, it's not weird. In fact, you'll think, you know, I'm like a smart person. Do it now, tytnetwork.com slash join.